In this video we study the reliable broadcast problem. Before we define reliable broadcast, let us first consider the basic, best effort broadcast. We are given a distributed system comprising a set of nodes, all of which can interact directly by exchanging messages. Assume that one node is the current sender, that is, this node wants to broadcast a certain message, in the example the value 8, to all other nodes. In the simplest possible broadcast algorithm, the sender simply sends a message containing the value 8 to all other nodes. If all goes well, every node receives the message and the broadcast concludes successfully. However, things may not always go as planned. Let's assume now that the sender crashes while broadcasting the message. In the example here, the sender managed to send the message to one node before crashing. The single recipient can deliver the received message, that is, accept it as the result of the broadcast but is this useful or reasonable? What if a broadcast message should only be used, for example as part of a larger protocol, if all nodes eventually receive it? In this simple best effort broadcast, a recipient cannot know if other nodes will receive the message too. If we consider worst case failures, which includes malicious behavior, the situation is even worse. In this case, if the sender is faulty, it may, accidentally or on purpose, send different messages to the other nodes. In this case, the recipients do not even know if the value they received is consistent with values that others may have received. Now that we understand better what can go wrong, let's define reliable broadcast. A reliable broadcast protocol should have the agreement property. That is, if messages are delivered, they must all be the same message. The second property is called totality. The property says that if a correct node delivers a value, it may take some time but the message is eventually also delivered at all other correct nodes. The third property is the validity property, which says that if the sender is a correct node and it sends some value x, then exactly this value will eventually be delivered at every correct node. What if the sender is faulty? In this case, it is possible that no message is ever delivered because the sender may crash right at the start of the execution, so there is nothing we can do in this situation. Lastly, the integrity property says that if a value has been delivered, no matter what happens in the network, no other value will be delivered. In other words, at most one message can be delivered in every protocol execution. In practice, a different instance of the protocol is used to deliver multiple messages. Moreover, the integrity property often includes the requirement that any delivered message must have been broadcast. Let us now study the first reliable broadcast protocol, which was invented by Bracker and first presented in 1987. The algorithm can tolerate f arbitrary failures, where f has to be strictly less than n divided by 3, and it proceeds in rounds. In the first round, the sender puts the value into a so called echo message and sends this message to all other nodes. Note that this first message from the sender sometimes has a different name but we call it an echo message here to reduce the number of different message types. If a node receives an echo message from the sender, it broadcasts an echo message with the same value itself in round 2. In round 3, if an echo message with the same value was received from at least n plus f plus 1 half nodes, where n is the number of nodes and f is the maximum number of faulty nodes, then a node broadcasts a vote message containing the same value. In the example here, there are four nodes and at most one failure can be tolerated because the total number of faults must be strictly less than a third of the number of nodes. So, n plus f plus 1 divided by 2 is 3. Note that a node further sends a vote message if it has received at least f plus 1 vote messages for the same value. So, all nodes exchange vote messages in the example. Lastly, if a node receives at least two f plus one vote messages for some value, then the node delivers that value and terminates. In the example here, all nodes deliver value 8 in the end. But that was just an example. We now have to show that the algorithm is correct by proving that it has all the properties that we defined earlier. Before focusing on the four properties, let's answer the question whether it is possible that two correct nodes ever send vote messages for different values. Obviously, it would be bad if many vote messages were broadcast for different values. Let's assume that x is the first value for which a vote message was sent. Since it is the first vote message, the sender of this message must have received n plus f plus 1 divided by 2 echo messages for this value. 
it is possible that f out of these echo messages came from faulty nodes, so at least n minus f plus 1 divided by 2 echo messages came from correct nodes. Let's now consider the node v that is the first correct node to broadcast a vote for a different value. If we assume that node v broadcast the vote message because it also received n plus f plus 1 divided by 2 echo messages, then it also must have received echo messages from n minus f plus 1 divided by 2 correct nodes. Since every correct node only sends at most one echo message, the two sets of correct nodes must be distinct, so there must be at least n minus f plus 1 correct nodes. But the number of correct nodes is n minus f, so this is a contradiction. So, we must assume that V broadcast its vote message because it received f plus 1 vote messages for this value. However, since there are at most f faulty nodes, it must have received at least one such vote message from a correct node, which is a contradiction to the assumption that V is the first node that sends such a vote message. We can conclude that it is not possible that correct nodes send vote messages for different values. Let's now focus on the four properties, starting with agreement. If two correct nodes deliver different values, then there must be at least two f plus 1 votes for both values, that is, at least f plus 1 correct nodes must vote for each of the two values. However, this is not possible as we just showed before that correct nodes never vote for different values. Let's consider the totality property. If some correct node v delivers a value, it must have received two f plus 1 vote messages for this value. Since at most f of these messages might have come from faulty nodes, there must be at least f plus 1 correct nodes that broadcast these vote messages. It follows that all correct nodes eventually receive at least f plus 1 votes for this value, which causes all of them to broadcast vote messages themselves. So, eventually all correct nodes receive at least 2 f plus 1 vote messages for this value and deliver it as well. It is easy to see that the validity property holds too. After the correct sender broadcasts echo messages, all correct nodes broadcast echo messages as well. Eventually, all correct nodes receive at least n minus f echo messages, which is at least n plus f plus 1 divided by 2 if f is strictly less than n divided by 3. Finally, all correct nodes receive at least n minus f votes for the sender's value, and so all correct nodes deliver this value. As far as the integrity property is concerned, we have already shown that correct nodes only vote for one value and so it is not possible for two values to receive sufficiently many votes to be delivered. Moreover, it is clear that votes require echo messages, which means that any delivered value must come from an execution of the reliable broadcast algorithm. Let's summarize what we've learned. We saw that a simple broadcast is not sufficient in case of failures. We introduced reliable broadcast as a solution. We defined that a reliable broadcast algorithm must have the four properties, agreement, totality, validity, and integrity. After defining the problem, we studied Bracker's algorithm and showed that it is a correct reliable broadcast algorithm that works even in the presence of worst-case failures as long as the number of failures is strictly less than a third of the number of nodes. Thanks for watching.